Welcome, everybody. This is a blab, and uh, it's a Power Podcasters blab, and I'm doing this for uh, one of my students because they had a question. They put it in their Power Podcast discussion group, and I thought uh, I could take a stab at answering it. But one of the beautiful things about the world that we live in is the fact that you don't have to be the expert in all topics in the world. I know there are people around that you see them on TV all the time who pretend to know everything. Uh, I don't, and I don't want to, particularly when he's here and he knows m like gazillion times more about the topic than I do and that, that I, and more than I would ever want to know. So uh, Dan Diet and I have known each other since 2000 and I think it's three could be, yeah, because you were at the Internet Marketing Center before me. So, yeah, so 12 no, years. No, I think you were at the same time as me. Okay, we were Okay, so we were, like, I don't remember you not ever being there. So Yeah, I trained at your desk. I remember the, the first time. Oh, I guess I was in the tech area before you, though. Yeah, you were in the tech area before me. And I beat you into the mentoring, but you, you were in the tech. And so we've kept up our friendship ever since. I left a few years later, and uh, Dan and I, we love to get together and talk about stuff that nobody else wants to hear about. And uh, he's done a lot of stuff in search engine optimizing, local, uh, local internet marketing, you name it. Uh, he's, he's an expert at putting it all together, particularly when it comes to stuff that you go, I have no clue. Dan is like, ah, piece of cake. And uh, so I want to read the question that started this whole thing. It's from Fran Francisco. Thank you, Francisco. A, a subject of interest would be on how to make a compelling email and follow up that will persuade more uh, industry rock stars to be uh, interviewed on my podcast. I'm going to change the wording around a little bit. Having a couple templates would be awesome. Thanks. So uh, you know, one of the things that we talk about in Power Podcasting is how do you get guests? And uh, and so there are probably some right ways and wrong ways to compose your email to your guests. And so um, I'm going to turn it over to Dan first. Uh, what, how would you respond, first of all, to Francisco? Well, first thing I would probably say is that uh, um, there is a, an ancient book that everyone should probably own a copy of, um, written in the 1930s that has a really, has really good answers for this kind of stuff written by a man named Dale Carnegie, um, mm -hmm. called how to win friends and influence people. Now, uh, uh, on Facebook, we've all got 5,000 friends, but what I mean by, uh, but more specifically influencing people, um, First thing I would think is what's the big benefit to the pot, uh, to the person you want to interview? Um, and the second thing I would want to think about is like, you know, if you've watched any of their other stuff online, kind of figure out what their likes and dislikes are. Um, and uh, I would also install something uh, called uh, Sidekick by HubSpot. It's free for the first month. And if you keep inviting people, you can have it for free for a long time. Uh, but basically what it'll do is tell you if the guy opened the email or not. Um, I use that. That is so, that is like creepy, right? Like I'll send an email and then it's like, okay, you've read it. You've opened it. Uh, I know you've got it and you're avoiding me because you haven't answered for three weeks. And I know you're in Los Angeles right now when you said you were still home in Florida. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, it's, it, it is creepy, but it's also, it's really beneficial if you're sending out proposals or an, a request to join a podcast. Yeah. Cause then so, you know someone's at, if they've got it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the bottom line is unless they've told you to, uh, you know, uh, leave when the sun doesn't shine, uh, you know, you know, you don't have to, you can keep trying, right. So, um, trying different angles. And so obviously the first place to start is the subject line. Um, I would, uh, just because uh, getting that open is when you think about an email subject line, it's kind of like the headline to copy. Um, the important thing is that you don't have to actually say it's about a podcast interview or anything like that. Um, if you're just, you know, the whole point of the subject line is just to get open, not to necessarily uh, sell the idea. Um, so you could use a crazy subject line, but I think a lot of experts don't mind being interviewed. So there's probably nothing against uh trying the first email to just literally say, 
you know, uh, would you like to join us on ABC podcast? Um, the second thing I would probably do is, you know, in the actual body, I would probably dive into, you know, uh, a little bit about the podcast itself, explaining, you know, um, what you cover, uh, what a people in the tribe typically have heard in the past. Um, like, for example, with you, Scott, you could easily say, you know, people who listen to my podcast are, um, you know, well-known internet marketers who, uh, you know, have been on the show before, as well as people who are interested in, you know, internet marketing advice and material and blah, blah, like, you know, maybe even mention statistics of, you know, the, the last, you know, few podcasts have gotten over 3,000 downloads or 2,000 downloads, um, you know, so highlighting the exposure, but also, you know, maybe even say, you know, I know you've probably been, I've been noticing a lot lately in the podcast world, one of the biggest complaints, uh, Joel Kahn was saying that he said, would somebody please interview me and ask me some questions that aren't on every podcaster's or interviewers list, you know, right, right. The standard, you know, how did you get started? You know, what would you do if you had a thousand bucks, you know, and, and a ferret and a micro bus? Like, no, you know, like, you know, but these standard questions people ask are just, you know, getting uh, insane. So I would probably even forward somebody some, some juicy questions and say, you know what, these are the kind of things that my viewers want to know about your topic. And, I promise you that, you know, we'll get some, uh, what do they call it? We'll have a good time. We'll have some fun. We'll, you know, whatever. We'll get some, uh, you know, we'll, and we'll really dig into some of the questions that people have been begging to know about you, uh, position you as the expert, um, you know, and get you some exposure and really kind of just think about it from their perspective. What do you think this person would want most out of an interview? Yeah. yeah. I, one of the one things of the, I really like when like you said, said was the the whole idea of knowing what 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 your guest wants right like i think too often what happens is people well i want you to be on my show right and unless you've got a relationship with them already i mean all i did was say hey dan you said hey scott i said i got this question about emails i thought of you first love to have you on as a blab and uh, and you said great like when so i said like how about in half an hour and here we are but we have this good, strong relationship. I can do that right now. If I didn't know Dan, I would probably say, you know, Dan, I've got 3,500 students in my power podcasting course. And one of them said, oh, this thing about emails. And like, you know, I know how to write an email, but I just was thinking about you. And I really liked that you did this post on Facebook and this tweet that you did. And you, you know, these are the other things. And oh, by the way, you know, I saw you on YouTube when you were talking about blah, 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 blah. And so I thought, you know, you'd be a really good person to ask this question. And here's the question. So would you like to come on my podcast? Would you like to come on a blab? Would you like to go on and do a hangout? Like whatever the format that you want to do. And then, but you see, I've already told him, like, I got 3,500 people, right? They might, you know, want some of your services. And I don't have to tell him he'll have a chance to, you know, to pitch at the end because there's no way he... He won't because I'll be asking him, well, like, you know, tell us a little bit about what you do. Oh, I do email servers and email marketing and email this and email that. And and my, you know, this pastor grew from, you know, two people in his church to 25,000 people in his church in two weeks because of my email campaign. And Joel Calm uses me for email marketing or whoever, right? I mean, he's got all this credibility that he can just throw out at, at, uh, at, at my audience that's already warm. Like if I say... Dan is a good guy, they're going to say, well, I trust Scott, Dan must be a good guy. So you give people that nice, warm uh, introduction and, and position the guest as the expert, get the answer to your question. So I really think, but then if, if Dan had hates writing email, then obviously my whole approach is going to be going out the window immediately because that's just not going to work, right? So I really think if you've got and I think there's another part to this, too, which is um, where you want to start. If you're starting out and it's your second podcast, you probably aren't going to want to, you know, go for the Dalai Lama or somebody that's, you know, or, or Justin Bieber. Or, you know, you're going to want to, depending on your audience, you're going to want to start somewhere, build it all up before you go for the, you know, the, the huge celebrities, I would, I would think. Yeah, unless you're kind of niche specific and you can kind of get away with it. Like, 
you know, I'm starting a, a podcast called emailexpertpodcast.com. And the whole point of it is that I'm going to interview uh, email experts. And, you know, what's weird is in that niche, uh, you know, people who genuinely, you know, refer to themselves as email marketing experts um, are, are not kind of like the Donald Trumps and the, you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, um, you know, the Frank Kearns of the world. They're not the kind of people that are so untouchable that, you know, they wouldn't uh, want to talk to you. But more more than that, I mean, they just the, the tribe's small enough that, you know, us email guys, you know, don't get to talk to each other enough where, you know, uh, heck, you know, me and Mitch Tarr, we uh, we went for uh, dinner a couple of weeks ago in Birch Bay, Washington, and him and I were both like, our spouses don't understand this stuff. This is great. We can talk in our language and we can, you know, talk about, uh, you know, sorbs and, you know, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, spam complaints and, you know, uh, MX toolbox and all these different problems that can happen, you know, and, uh, you know, register our issues with the email or sorry, domains that have been blocked by spam, uh, all these different things. And we could speak our language and, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, two aliens talking to each other and the rest of the room, even the lady delivering the co or uh, the beers and the coffees was like, you know, these guys must be aliens. But that's right. That's right. Every, uh, guys, every group has its own language. And you yeah. actually reminded me when I uh, when I was working at a major grocery chain for 20 years. And I remember being in the middle of the sales floor talking to two of my staff for about three minutes. It was just, you know, basically I was giving them directions. And a customer had stopped behind me. And so when I was done, everybody took off. And she turned to me and she says, you know, I listened to you the whole time. And I have no idea what you said. <laughs> it's quite funny, eh? <laughs> you know, Coke this, Pepsi that. And it was, but so we all have our, and, and I think. About the guys, UPCs, the SKUs and the. <laughs> that's right, the SKUs. Uh, UPCs. Uh, anyway, for, I don't want to get into that. The point being is, is that you have a topic for your podcast there is a community of people that are interested in that topic and there are people that want to be heard and there's people that the, your tribe wants to hear. And so once you identify those people, then it's the biggest problem I really think is, you know, what's in it for me? Like we, we tend to tell people, Hey, I, I, this is what I want. And we don't ever sort of think, well, like, you know, what do you want? What, what can I offer you in exchange for your time? That's going to be very valuable. Right. And, I think as you, because I, part of this question for me is a, is approachability. Like, and when you're in the tribe, it's kind of like I don't know Dan, but I know Mitch. So you know, Mitch, I, you know, I want to talk to Dan about this, but what, you know, what do you think he's going to say? Oh, well, hell, no problem. Just call him; you'd be fine. Or it'll be well. Don't talk about his football team because they're losing. <laughs> And he's really upset about it right now. So talk about something else when you warm him up or, or whatever, right? I mean, it's you, but even if he didn't tell me very much and I just said, by the way, Dan, you know, I was talking to Mitch, he mentioned you, that's all of a sudden I've got that rub. And so it's okay. Well, you know, Mitch suggested that I contact you because you could help me. Well, now he's not going to put Mitch in the, pro you know, he's not going to make Mitch look bad because Mitch just made him look good. And so he's going to be there. So when you look at your group and your community and the people around it, you need, you're probably more connected to them than you think you are, I guess is my point. The second part is when you're doing stuff, people around you see. And I've had that happen actually twice in the last week where uh, a gal I've known for a long time uh, contacted me and says, you know, I've been watching you. I really like what you're doing and I want to do some stuff. And I said, oh, OK, let's talk about it. Right. And then another person just this morning was I saw you on a blab and I had you know, already interviewed him once. So it's not like he was a stranger and we've had conversations back and forth. But he contacted me, he says, you know, I just saw you on that blab you did yesterday and I really like blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I want to talk to you and get together and chat about some stuff. Right. So once you're kind of out there, because most people aren't you get noticed even if you don't think anybody's noticing like i felt like i was being stalked by these both both these people in a nice way right like really watching who i thought nobody was watching right 
And <laughs> the nice thing about Blabs is I can tell, you know, there's three people watching right now. And, um, and so when you're doing that and you're doing stuff, people want to be a part of it. And I think, you know, if you look at what is, what are those people doing? What's important to those people? And what are you doing? And how can it fit? And how can you help each other? Uh, that's a big part of it. And then it's just putting it into your own language. I think one of the, the other part of this question, Dan, was a template. And I hate getting a templated email. You know, I well, you know what? I mean, uh, I do too, but I also, I think that being able to follow a formula would probably be helpful. I mean, we mm -hmm. could probably blast one together pretty easy. Yeah. So the, the point being is, is if I wrote it out and handed it to you and it went out to a thousand people, I, I think it, uh, and I was one of the thousand people I would, I could tell, right? Whereas if you, if you have a, a system, so that's what I meant by a template. The other part of a template is here's your email subject line. Here's how you open it up. Here's, you know, you talk a little bit about this sort of thing, that sort of thing, that sort of thing, that sort of thing. Here's your pitch and you know put a ps at the end and away you go so that's a different type of template than than the one i want i want to make that distinction right like if i give you a boilerplate and all of a sudden there's thousands of people sending out the same email and all you're doing is changing the name that's not really going to work that's true and so the other thing i was thinking that i was starting to realize as we're talking through this is that the standard rules of persuasion also apply Right. Like if you wanted to write this email, you could also use reciprocity um, by maybe sending them something of value uh, in exchange for uh, the possibility of coming on the podcast. You could also use social proof like you were talking about, you know, X amount of people watch the show or uh, or listen, tune into the podcast. You could also use authority to kind of explain your own positioning in terms of like, you know, how popular you are. You could. Uh, use consistency where you say, you know, I know you're a big, you know, fan of X, Y, Z. And I know that you're a big fan of, you know, um, you know, um, you know, these topics or these, uh, you know, animal rights or whatever it is, or, you know, uh, tinfoil hat topics or something, <laughs> you know, right. you could kind of make that in if you wanted to and use the consistency thing, uh, congruency. Um, you know, like all the, the six persuasion techniques Robert Caldini talks about, um, you could kind of play those into it as well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you wanted to in terms of getting That's uh, a great book, Influence. It sure is. I love it. I use it for just about everything. And, uh, and it works. It really does. I mean, you know, it's funny. I can't count how many times I've, you know, put into a landing page, uh, you know, 4,000 people like this page and, you know, when you just embed a different fan page than the actual lander and uh, you know, just using scarcity and uh, you know, saying, Hey, listen, uh, you know, I'm, in, I'm uh, looking into six other people, but I really want you. But if you don't get back to me by Friday, you know, uh, I know you want to, I know that, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I've also got all these three other people that are interested in coming on the show, but I'd really like to work with you. If you get back to me by Thursday or Friday at the latest, uh, I still might have that seat open, but I can't guarantee it, right? Nothing like scarcity. Right. Scarcity, urgency, uh, reciprocity, social proof, uh, all those things work. Um, you know, it would be worthwhile to even consider sending somebody like that, uh, you know, uh, a product or, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, sending them an article about something if they, uh, if you know they're interested in certain things. Uh, I have that happening to me, actually quite often because the, a lot of the people that are kind of around me know these are the topics that Scott's interested in or talking about or evangelizing about. And so you know, I'll get these you know, private messages on Facebook or an email or it just comes from all over the place. Oh, I saw this, thought you'd really like it. And, and of course, it's always like, yeah, thanks. That was interesting information. Appreciate it. So uh, that's, you know, it's a part of just, and, and I think that's great. You know, if you, if you, you can actually warm up the person that you want to approach start two or three weeks in advance and say, okay, like they're really interested in whatever the topic is. In addition to the reason that I want them, you know, the topic, I may want them on my podcast. And Absolutely. So if anybody hears or sees anything about banjo music, it's a big thing. Scott really likes. <laughs> no, no, please. No. 
Not banjo <laughs> music, anything but. <laughs> <laughs> that's great I'm, now i'm going to be inundated with youtube videos and i'll feel obliged to watch them and then comment intelligently about them to the person that sent them to me well be grateful i didn't say bagpipes right i mean that's all i gotta say <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's talk a little bit about a template how would you sort of structure the the flow of an email that you're going to send somebody who you want to have as a guest on your podcast and let's say that you know They've got a couple things that are uh, uh, that are important to them, and you you know what they you you've done a little bit of research, you know a little bit about them. We're kind of making this sort of up in, in a very general way, but how how would you approach it? Huh. Well, I think uh, um, what do they call it? Uh, I'd probably start with uh, you know uh, the subject line being something like. Uh, um, you know, uh, so maybe something like uh, RE, upcoming podcast uh, uh, interview with you, uh, or something like that. And then in the. I don't remember that had to interview with him. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like it's already scheduled, right? Because that's going to get attention. That's why I do the RE colon, you know? Right. Uh, so, anyway, so I'd probably do that. And then that. Uh, the being up to, and I don't have one. <laughs> what's that? What's my VA been up to? And I don't have one. There you go. So, yeah, so I would do that. And then in the body, I would probably start off by talking about them first. Cause uh, you know, uh, some of the sweetest words in the English language are our own name. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd probably start off by, you know, mentioning, uh, you know, Hey, I've been, if I didn't know them at all, I would probably start off by saying stuff like, so I've been, you know, watching the things you post on YouTube and Twitter or Facebook or whatever. I noticed you really like A, B, and C. I noticed in a such and such interview, you're really interested in this. Well, this ties in perfectly with that. Um, you know, because you're an expert in, uh, you know, uh, in the in the field of uh, left-sided bees, I just wanted to, uh, you know, uh, mention that there, we're going to be doing a podcast about that. Um, I've got three other experts that I'm looking at, but you are particularly one of my favorites. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on A, B, and C. I know you've got a, you know, a really specific view on those things that people really appreciate. Now I'd mentioned my podcast has the, this kind of uh, viewership or should have this kind of viewership. I'm putting this kind of ad spend into it or, you know, this kind of, uh, you know, JV partners that might hear about it. Um, you know, I, uh, I'm published on, you know, eight, 20, 40 different podcast directories and feeds, um, you know, and maybe even mention, uh, uh, you know, all those kind of things. And then basically say, uh, you know, I need to hear from you by ABC date um, so I can lock in my calendar. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then, yeah, I think, uh, I think probably then just uh, wrap it up with looking forward to hearing from you and, and there. And then of course, the follow-up, if I didn't get any response whatsoever uh, and it was opened, uh, then I would probably just, you know, try the reciprocity approach like we talked about with sending different things. If it wasn't opened, I'd just try that exact same email again with a different subject line. Okay. You know, like for maybe even pretend they're already scheduled and say uh, regarding our upcoming September 24th talk. Right. Right. Cool. You, know, you haven't agreed to yet? <laughs> Well, there's the, you know, in sales, you have the assumptive close, right? So Absolutely. I, I think you want to assume that, of course, they're going to be want to be on the podcast. Like, why wouldn't they? It just makes total sense. Right. So the date's just a negotiation point. It's not really a yes or a no. Yeah. If that, <laughs> if that date doesn't work with you. Let us know dates to do and we'll see, you know, if we can be flexible. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, Dan. I really appreciate uh, you sharing that. I think we've covered that particular topic uh, pretty thoroughly. Um, so tell us a little bit about email marketing in general and some of the stuff that you've been up to. Some of the stuff I've been up to. Well, I'm working on a membership site for uh, uh, my email marketing course. Um, as you've been, as you well know, uh, I kind of got into launches in the last little while. Um, I've had some incredible experiences that, uh, you know, uh, I couldn't even begin to explain that uh, they make no sense. 
um, businesses that have made very few or no sales that I bring in this approach and I run through a launch. And, and you know, it's weird. I mean, people think of it as an I am thing or or whatever, but I've even seen it work in lead generation fields. Like I used it for debt consolidation and it worked. Um, okay. You know, so can you give us kind of an overview without getting into the details of the process? Yeah. So the process is that basically, um, you know, assuming you either are building a list or have a list, um, you take brand new prospects um, or past prospects through a series of three free things or free or, or educational pieces. So they can be in an email or in a video or, you know, in a podcast. Uh, I've even done that in a podcast now. Um, but either way, you get three valuable things and they're sent to you via email. Each one of them has an engagement function in it. So, you know, whether that's, you know, email us or, you know, comment on this Facebook page. Uh, message box. Uh, each one of them has an engagement component. And those are kind of the canary in the mind. They kind of tell us, you know what, these people are interested in the topic, we're asking the right questions, we're hitting the right hot buttons, or we're not. Okay, but then, um, obviously, we usually there's a couple other little tricks we can do, whether it be a contest, or, um, you know, whether it be uh, uh, a burning question or whatever, before we dive into the actual launch, which is, you know, basically a dream offer. Um, which has a, a, a special package based on everyone's feedback and a limited window and, uh, you know, and then, of course, a, an official close date. And so that doesn't mean that you can't sell that item anymore. I mean, a lot of guys, Internet marketers, uh, close their funnels forever after the date. Um, I don't believe in that. But what I do believe in is that, you know, Apple has the right idea. You know, everybody's standing up, getting drenched in, the, in front of their stores, this idea that, the initial offering should be special. It should be, mm -hmm. um, you know, there should be some scarcity, some urgency, some, um, you know, some some excitement and some a feeling that you know that you're unique and special that you've gotten a chance to to jump in on this offer. So is most of the time that a price differential between like here's my launch price and here's the regular price. Like for the first four hours, it's twenty bucks, and after that, it's forty bucks. Or are there other ways of doing it? Well, there can be specific things like, for example, one-on-one uh, -on -one group coaching for, you know, the first hundred buyers, or it could be, uh, you know, price is an option, but really, I mean, the only way I would ever do price is if, you know, my launch price is going to be a hundred bucks and regular price is two grand. Like it has to be special enough that it really makes it unique. Okay. You know, it has to, there has to be something that really, that really makes it amazing because, you know, these people have, I like to think people have, you know, kind of stuck around from all these content pieces. I, I really want to make them feel like what I'm giving them is is really unique. It's something they're not going to get anywhere outside of the launch. So might come with an extra book, might come with physically shipped objects, something, but it's going to be very special. I, and I like the fact that you're not talking about price. I was kind of leading into that because to me, uh, everybody seems to be like, oh, we'll just discount, discount, discount. And I think that's a real mistake when, uh, you know, someone's quite willing to pay you $2,000. Why are you giving it to them for a hundred bucks? You know, or you want to know something neat that I was talking with uh, some people about this morning in a, in a mastermind call, you know, I, I actually got the privilege to go to this mastermind group uh, several years ago where Dan Kennedy that was there, Russell Brunson was there and all these high rollers and nobody who was there um, had paid less than five grand to be there. And everybody there was making over 10 million who were actually in the mastermind chat. And they were all talking about the threshold of money that you can make on different platforms. And what's interesting is there's this general consensus that a landing page can't push more than a hundred dollars unless it's software and then it's 200. And then for, uh, what do they call it? For webinars, the threshold's 2,500. If you, you know, on a webinar, it's pretty much impossible or very difficult to get past 2500 on the price of a product on a webinar. Hmm. With, uh, what do they call in-person events, 10,000 seems to be the rough limit. You're at a, a physical event or a seminar and you're teaching something, you know, asking more than 10,000 is a, is a really tough thing. But in person, uh, the sky's the limit. I mean, 100,000, a million, you know, you can in person one on one. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Steve Jobs went to an investor and, and got four million from a guy on a one-on-one -on -one 
private chat in, a, in an office, you know, right. that's possible because you've got that intimacy level, but you see the intimacy levels like landing page, super cold, right? hundred yeah. bucks, no problem. 200 maybe for software. But once you get up and up and up the scale in a webinar, you can close a $2,500 deal. So, you know, back to the launch factor and what you were talking about, um, you know, price point, you know, our famous, uh, you know, mentor and friend, uh, Corey Rudel used to say, never, ever make price your differentiator because uh, somebody can always be cheaper. But when you're pushing value, you know, which and, and through the right type of relationship and the right no like trust. I mean, really, you can sell what everybody else sells for 100 bucks for 2500 and people will buy it all day long because there's, you know, an extra perceived value and an extra perceived trust and, and relationship there. Right. You know. Okay. So let's suppose that uh, we're talking to somebody and they have no list. They've just started out. And I'm actually thinking of like launching their podcast, but let's just keep it to kind of simple, like a product. Uh, how would you get the people to so because I can kind of see your the funnel is you've got a the landing page you send them some stuff send them some stuff and then you kind of have the end game so to speak and maybe some OTOs or one time offers or downsells and all that sort of stuff going on but for a lot of people the problem is is I know my mom I know you I know you know the neighbor I've got a sister I don't know anybody so where am I going to get these customers from. Well, the old day, olden days answer, which I used for years and you did too, and we all did, uh, was to give away an ebook because everybody, you know, uh, wants some chunk of value uh, that maybe answers a burning question they have. And that used to work really well. And I mean, it still works, but it's, it's working at about half the effectiveness it used to. Today, my favorite new thing is a membership site, um, you know, with, uh, you know, maybe one module free. Um, or a piece of software like a quiz that, you know, says, you know, are you, uh, what stops you from being a rock star podcaster? You know, please, uh, you know, choose one of these, like, you know, yes, I'm good at this. No, I'm good at that. And, you know, basically at the very end, we'll tell you on a scale of one to 50, you know, what the likelihood of you becoming entrepreneur on fire or not is, you know? Right. Um, so like with something like that, in order to get the results, they have to confirm their email address to get the free report that tells them here's where you're at and here's how you have to do to get here, mm -hmm. uh, over to here from where you are right now. Like those kind of things, you know, like the relationship tests and stuff like that, they work great. Um, and people, of course, you know, are more than likely to confirm in order to get the uh, the answer or to get the log into the software. Of course, have to send your log into an email address, right? So it makes sense. Yeah. It's just a no brainer. So those are the kind of things I do is make something that, you know, somebody needs to give their email address to, to, to get. And then of course, whether you go viral and use some kind of a Martin Luther King style speech to, to polarize your audience and say, you know, um, you know, everybody in my audience would really, really like this. And, you know, it's kind of the manifesto of our industry. We need this and have a cause types thing that would kind of get shared and, and kind of virally spread or whether you just use some ad spend and kind of target people in your niche who would be interested in the quiz or the, you know, or the membership site, something's gonna, you need some kind of a hook to get them in there. Right. And then there, of course, you know, the reciprocity bits and the, and the launch. So here's my techie part coming out. And like, do you like Facebook ads, AdWords, Bing ads, Craigslist ads? Is there any, I guess, Part of the answer is depends on the product and the audience and all the rest of it. But do you find one any more effective than the other? You know, what's weird is I find that uh, I really do like Facebook ads for certain markets, uh, but Google is still far more effective. It really is. Okay. Um, Bing is exactly as effective as Google, but just, you know, a tenth of the traffic. So, um, you know, they're really basically the same animal. Um, but with Google, the weird thing is that when somebody's searching for something, they're actually hunting for an answer. And when you're on Facebook, you can slice it 10 ways to Tuesday, but they're still, you're still disruptive content. You're in their face with something they may not have wanted. Right. I mean, you can target people who may like this book and may like, you know, maybe in this age bracket or whatever. But if, you know, today at three o'clock, they see the ad and they're not, they're not looking at three o'clock right now for that thing. Still not as powerful as search. You know, when somebody's searching for something 
and they're actively hunting. Their mind is dedicated. Their, that moment of their life has been set aside for that search to an answer for this question. Nothing beats that. Cool. Awesome. Great. Well, Dan, thank you very much. We've been almost 45 minutes, which was, uh, I, I think, I never actually told you how long this was going to go, did I? <laughs> I was going to say, I told you 20 minutes and it's been half twice as long. But um, if somebody, I think what you've been sharing is absolutely awesome information and way beyond what it was that I wanted to get out of you today. So thank you very much for that. Uh, if somebody wants to get a hold of you and uh, put together a membership, so you can actually put together the membership site. You can put together that relationship questiony thing that you were talking about. You can help them with the AdWords thing. You can help them with the mail server. You can help them with the email campaigns. All put putting together the nice design of the site. If they're like right off, have nothing, right? Yeah, I can do all those things. Uh, and you know what the cool thing is. Uh, over the years, I've been finding different ways to streamline costs and all that stuff. So I've trained a bunch of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, new people who, uh, who cost a lot less. So um, I've got labor that can do uh, all those things for pretty affordable rates. So Great. So if somebody wanted to talk to you some more and find out how, if there's a fit between you and them, how, how, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Well, if they went to www.answerswanted.com, that's www.answerswanted.com, um, there's a, a a free, what's it called? Free assessment, I think it's called, or whatever. In other words, you will get into the process that you're going to want to put your potential customers into immediately when you go there. Isn't it funny that I recommend doing a quiz to get opt-ins? And there's a quiz on my site. <laughs> I don't know how that happened on there. And you know, what's really interesting is that even if you never decide that you actually want to uh, work with me or, or my team, uh, which there's pictures of my team on there, you can actually see their smiling faces. But even if you don't want to work with us, just go through that form yourself and just don't click submit because it, it in itself is an assessment. It's an analysis. Um, it basically walks you through, uh, what do they call that? Um, it basically walks you through, you know, uh, do you have this figured out yet? Do you have this figured out yet? Do you have this figured out yet? And you can basically get, you know, find out where you're at just by going through the form. <laughs> it's pretty Great. cool. Awesome. So this is the Power Podcasters Blab, and uh, I really appreciate having you all uh, join us. And we're going to sign off now. Thank you very much, everybody. And thank you very much, Dan. Really appreciate it. www.answerswanted.com. And we appreciate the props. And uh, I, we're going to have to do this a little bit more, Dan. It's been a lot of fun. We should. <laughs> <laughs>